Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 296, page 297 rather, page 297 and today is our lesson number 188. Problem number 6 is what we're going to do. Data analysis, problem number 6. In this problem they are asking us how many different ways can the letters in the word How many different ways can the letters in the word study can be arranged? Be ordered, they said be ordered, can be arranged. can be arranged. Now let's understand the basic concept behind behind this topic here. What we, what we have our, at our hand, what we have at our hand is what is known as permutation. In permutation order matters. In, in which order you arrange things matters. As opposed to the next topic that, we, that you will have to master, that you will have to understand for the exam, which is called combination. In combination, order does not matter. For example, for example, in the case of permutation, where the order matters, you will ask the following question in this manner. You will say, how many different ways can I sit two people on two chairs? I have two chairs here. How many different ways can I set two people on these chairs? And the answer of course is, there are two ways. I can put A here and B here, or I can put B in the first chair and A in the second chair. These chairs have significance. This, these locations have significance. These are locations, they, they have addresses, the first, first, first place and the second place. And they have significance. Putting A in the first place is different from putting A in the second place and putting B in the first place. This is called permutation. This is what we are dealing with here. Order matters. As opposed to combination, in which case, in the case of combination, you would have asked the question in the following manner. You would say, how many different ways can I pick two people out of two people? Well, if there are a total of two people and you are asked to pick two people, there is only one way, which is AB or BA. They do not count as two different options. It's just one option. Whether you, whether you say a, B or B, A, it doesn't matter, you're picking the same two people. And because you're picking the same two people, the order in which you pick them, the order in which you arrange them, has no significance. And that is called combination. Here we're dealing with permutation. What we're going to do is, what we're going to do here, before we go to, before we deal with this part here, and before I forget it, let me point out another thing here. So in this, in this question, we have one, two, three, four, five people. Think of this as five people and we are asked to arrange these five people in a sitting order. With no conditions whatsoever. There are no restrictions. They can sit, uh, there is no condition at all as to who cannot sit where or somebody. Nobody says I'm not going to sit next to this guy. Or nobody says I'm, I don't want to sit at the corner. Nobody says that I want to sit in the middle. There are no conditions here. That's the first problem we're going to do, which is today's problem 188. Tomorrow we're going to do the exact same problem but we will have one condition that we will have to meet. More conditions that you put, the fewer options we will have as to how we can arrange these people. And of course the numbers will keep getting going lower. The day after tomorrow on day 190, tomorrow on day 189, we are going to do the exact same problem with one condition in it. If you read the next question, you will see question number 7, where we have Martha who is hell-bent on sitting in the middle. And that's the condition we will have to observe, and we'll, but it's basically the same exact problem. Day after tomorrow, we're going to do one more problem, which is not in the book. I'm going to give you that problem where we'll have to meet two conditions. Okay? Anyway, let's get going. What I want to do is to start out with, is to deal with some simple scenario. Instead of the word study, 
instead of the word study, I'm going to give you a new word, a very nice word, a very fun word. Let's not forget about the study. The question is, how many different ways can we can the letters in the word rat can be ar arranged? We have a rat. How many different ways can we arrange these words, uh, these letters? Well, let's find out. So we have a rat to begin with. I can keep the R in the first place, in the first place, and switch the T and the A. Switch the T and the A. That's two. There are two ways now so far. Or we can put A in the first place, and then if you put A in the first place, we'll have R and T, or T and R. Again, switch them. Or we can put T in the first place. Let's put T in the first place. So if you put T in the first place, then we have R A or A R. Turns out there are six different ways that these three objects can be ordered. There are six different ways that they can be placed. This is one way of doing it. This is, this is literally enumerating every possible uh, arrangement and counting how many there are. Which is fine when you're dealing with a lower number like only three letters or four letters. But when we get into higher, higher numbers, even six or seven would be a hell to figure out one by one individually, manually as to how many different arrangements are possible. There has to be a quicker way. The quicker way is this. The quicker way is we ask ourselves, we ask ourselves, how many different ways can we fill the first spot? How many different ways can we fill the first spot? Well, in the first spot, we have three choices. We can put either R or A or T. There are R or A or T. We have three different choices for the first spot. We can put any one of those three, as you can see here. Once we have done that, how many different ways can we fill the first, uh, second spot? Well, only two ways, because whichever one that you pick here, let's suppose you, that you pick T for the first spot. Let's suppose you pick T for the first spot. How many different ways can we fill the second spot? Well, T is already picked. We cannot pick it again. Repetition is not allowed, obviously. So we have only two choices. We, if you pick T, we have only two choices. We have either A or R. So there are two choices for the second spot. How many different ways can we fill the third spot? Let's pick, let's suppose that we picked R for the, for, the, for, the, for the second spot. How many different ways can we fill the third spot? Now that's a tricky question. That's a theoretical question. It has no significance in practice. It's a moot, it's a moot point at this point. It's a moot point because once you have picked R for the first, uh, T for the first spot and R for the second spot, there's only one guy left and there's only one space that we have to fill. So it's not a matter of choice. Whatever is left, whoever is left at the end, has to be picked for the now that doesn't mean that this is always that doesn't mean that that is always the case. If we had ten people and if you had to pick three out of ten, then of course we'll have ten choices for the first spot, nine choices for the second spot, and we'll have eight choices for the third spot. But here, since we have three choices, three 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 people and three spots, there's only one choice here, which is which is whoever is left. We picked E, we picked R, A is the only one left. Let's put A here. And then what do you do? Do we add these numbers? No, we do not add them. We multiply them. We multiply them. This is where the 6 is coming from. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a simpler example to convince you that these 6 choices, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, these 6 arrangements are not coming from the fact that it's, that it's not coming from the fact that it's 3 plus 2 plus 1, which is also 6, which is just a fluke here. I'm going to convince you that we don't multiply them, we add them. I'm going to do it up here. Let's pretend that we have two people, A and D. Two people, and we're going to put them in two places. How many different ways can we fill the first spot? We have either A or B. We have two choices. How many different, once we have picked one of them, once we have picked one person, so for first spot, how many different ways can we fill the second spot? Obviously only one way. If we pick B for the first spot, we have to pick A for the second spot. There is only one way. And obviously if we were to add the two numbers, you would have gotten three. But of course we know there are only two ways we can arrange these two people. The only two ways that we can arrange two people is AB or BA. There are only two choices, which is why we multiply the two numbers, not add them. They have to be multiplied. Do you understand? Let's do the problem that is given to us now with the word study in it. Now that we understand the concept, it is a very simple question. We have five letters. S, T, U, D, Y. And there are five spots. One, two, three, four, five. 
There are five choices for the first part S T U D Y S T U D Y S T U D Y S T U D Y S T U D and Y. Let's pick one. How many choices do we have for the first part? We have five choices for the first part. We can pick any one of these five letters. Let's suppose that we pick letter U. If you pick letter U for the for the first part, then U cannot be picked again. He's out. Of the, he's out of the game. How many choices do we have for the second spot? We have four choices for the second spot. There are four different ways we can fill the second spot. Let's say that we pick T, letter T for the second spot. Once we pick letter T for the second spot, that guy is already chosen, he's no longer available. We can't repeat, we can't repeat anything. Let's pick somebody for the third spot. How many choices do we have? We have three choices. We can pick either this guy or this guy or this guy. Let's suppose that we pick letter D for the second, third spot. We have three choices. And let's suppose that we pick D. If you pick D, we can no longer pick him again. How many do choices do we have for the second one? Or for the, this, this part, we have two choices. Either S or a Y. Let's pretend that we pick letter S. If you pick letter S, we no longer have the choice. And finally, at the very end, whoever is left has to go here. There is only one way we can fill that spot. And the answer is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 has a name in English, uh, in mathematics. Mathematicians call it, this is how we write it. This is how we write it. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Mathematicians feel silly to go around saying 5 times 3 times 4, 5. See, I messed it up. They feel silly to going around saying 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It is too much to say. They have given this concept a name. They call it, they call it 5, 5 factorial. That's what it's called. 5 factorial. 5 factorial and this is how they write it 5 with the exclamation mark 5 with the exclamation mark means 5 factorial 3 factorial would be 3 with the exclamation mark like this and that means 3 times 2 times 1 here the answer is answer to that question is 5 factorial and of course whatever that works out to be that's our answer 5 times 4 is 20 20 times 3 is 20 times 3 is 60, 60 times 2 is 120. There are 120 ways we can arrange these five people on a five chair. Think of these as five people to be, to be seated on, a, on, fa, on, on, on five chairs or around a desk with five chairs in it. How many different ways we can arrange these five people around the desk with five chairs on it, around a dining table? There are 120 ways. Now I shouldn't have used the word dining table because in the very next problem they're not sitting around a circular table, they're sitting on a straight line in the movie theaters and this one woman, read the next question ahead of time and do the, try to do it yourself. Her name is Martha and she's going to movies with four friends in the next one. Okay, this is the plot of the, of, the, of, the, of the next scene. Problem number seven. This Martha woman is going to a movie with four of her friends. And she's hell-bent that she will sit in such a manner that two of her friends are to the right of her and two of her friends are to the left of her. So that she is in the center so she can converse with everybody easily. She's hell-bent that she wants to sit in the middle. Given that condition, now how many devices do we have to set these five people? With no restrictions, as we can see, there are 120 ways we can arrange them. With one restriction that one person is hell-bent on sitting here, now how many choices do we have? That's what we have to figure out in the next problem, which we will do tomorrow. Try to do it on your own ahead of time, okay? Bye now.